Now, when we look at the eye and we kind of look, let light come in, we have our lens that's kind of suspended in space. Then we have a color portion that's kind of right around that lens. The, le the color portion is your iris. The hole in the middle is your pupil. That lens is kind of a bi-convex disc type thing that's kind of suspended up like this. And what you're going to see, um, yeah, let's do that. All right, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, interactive learning. Move. Do it now. Now. All right, so here's our little muscles again. So when we look at this, you're kind of looking at lateral rectus here. So we have superior rectus, superior oblique. This is inferior oblique. And this is inferior rectus. We had our three coverings. You're seeing part of them here. Here's our sclera. What layer is this? Choroid. Choroid. And then this inner layer is a neural layer. That's the, that's the retina. Now, when we look at this from end, our light's going to be coming in the eyeball this way. As it kind of enters through, it's going to go through a hole. That's the pupil. Then it's going to have our color area around here that's referred to as the iris. That's our disc. That's this here. That's our lens. When light comes in, or when we're trying to focus on things, that lens kind of tries to kind of bounce its shape ever so slightly. It's kind of like a magnifying glass that has the capability. When you do a magnifying glass, what do you do? You take whatever you're looking at, maybe you bring the glass closer, further away, closer, further away. Well, you kind of can't do that with the eyes all the time, right? I mean, you could. You could read back <laughs> off. You could do read like that. But most of the time, the lens kind of conforms and changes shape to accommodate to what it's looking at. Far vision, near vision, and the like. It's suspended by these little ligaments that are up through here. And these little ligaments that suspend the lens, 360, the lens is suspended all the way around, by these little ligaments that are called suspensatory ligaments. That in order for those little ligaments to do their job, a little muscle has to contract. Again, this is 360 degrees, and so when we look here, we would see that all the way around. There's little muscles that end up on those little suspensory ligaments that kind of help that lens change its shape. Those little muscles are referred to as ciliary muscles. All right, so we're building a little case here. Here's, a, again, what's this thing right here? What's this? What's the thing named? I don't know. That's the... That's the muscles. Conjunctiva. Conjunctiva. All right, so here's our lacrimal gland. Tears are going to come across into the lacrimal sac, down into that nasolacrimal duct, right? Yeah. I need someone to stand up. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, cool. like right. So, now light's coming in. We have a couple of things that we see here. As light comes straight back, it might seem like as the image is coming in, it's going to come straight to this point right here. You're really kidding me, right? No. <clears throat> so this little spot that you see as it's coming, the straight point at, is not connected to the nerve at all. What does that mean? Well, that means it's probably not going to pick up any images. It's not going to reflect any images. It's not anything that's not going to be sent to the occipital lobe. This little spot that's only back here, that's referred to as the blind spot. Okay. As we kind of, the part that actually is going to pick up the image is sitting right here where we're looking right now. It's part of what's called the optic disc. And this little section that's right here is referred to as the fovea. See the little indentation that I have on, when I'm pointing around with the probe? That's the fovea, sometimes referred to as the fovea centralis. If you look at this one, you see it here as well. On this little image that's a blow-up, you see a number three, 
than in number one. The number three is this spot that's over here, which is the blind spot. The number one is this portion, which is the fovea. As we come back, and we're going to see very nicely, and we saw in the sheet brain last week, we then lead into the optic nerve. Remember, the optic nerve is going to come back, and it's going to cross. It's going to cross at what? What is that place called? Optic chiasm. As we showed here, part of visual field from the right is going to cross over. Part of visual field on the left will cross over at that crossing or the, uh, that, at the chiasm. We see kind of here, inside here, you're, this is trying to indicate that there's an artery and vein that are running along with the nerve, which there are. So there's an optic artery and an optic vein running along with it. Okay? So we're building up some of our visual type stuff. There are, if you kind of look at this, and I outline this section, and then I out like that. Can you buy that those look like chambers or spaces? We do have an anterior chamber, and then we're going to have a posterior chamber. This is the anterior chamber here between the outside of the cornea and the lens. So here's our cornea. Here's our lens. There's a space in there. There's liquid in there, and it's really, really water-based. That's where it gets its name. Humor. It was an old Latin term that meant liquid, body fluid. And so this is another type of humor or a body fluid, and it's sitting in the anterior chamber, and, we refer, and it's really water-based, so we call it aqueous humor. Yeah. So the cornea is... It's this portion, this, row, this portion right here. Okay, so it's, the lens is behind that. Yeah, absolutely. So again, as the, as the lens goes through this cornea, the, water, the, excuse, the light goes through the cornea, goes through this anterior chamber with the aqueous humor, and encounters the lens, the lens will change shape based upon what's going on with the ciliary body. Ciliary body having its suspensory ligaments and its ciliary muscle. That image continues back into this posterior chamber. In the posterior chamber, the humor or the fluid is a little thicker it's again going to be kind of a, the consistency a little bit like an egg white. Not as sticky, but kind of like an egg white. That's going to have a different name. It's called vitreous humor. Vital humor. Important humor. That image will continue back. It's not going to pick anything up here at this spot that we call the blind spot. But rather the image is going to go through this fovea into the optic nerve through the optic chiasm, back these optic tracks to the occipital lobe. Running along with that optic nerve is an artery and a vein. Okay? <coughs> All right, so let's do that again. Notice what we're doing. It's easier rather than just memorizing a picture, say you're looking at something. Kind of talk yourself through the structures as that light or that image is coming into the eye. Now, so we've looked at our eye and we know that we had a couple of layers to it. We have three in fact. We have an outer connective tissue layer, we have a middle vascular layer, and we have an inner neural layer. From outside to in, those are referred to as the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. Controlling that eye were six muscles. Four of them are straight, rectus. Two of them are on angle, oblique. On all four corners of the eye are their straight muscles, medially, laterally, superiorly, Inferiorly, they're all rectuses. But if I put my my uh, my eye on an axis, I want to be able to rotate it, and two of them do that rotation. We have an oblique muscle superiorly, and we have an oblique muscle inferiorly. That's six extraocular muscles. All right, now that th that image is going to come in. All right, the image was too damn bright. And it made us blink, and because it made us blink, we produced a tear. How did that happen? The lacrimal gland produces the tear.